And now, let's join Mike for today's show. Hello, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to the program, and we're glad you could tune us in today. We're going to discuss um, an important issue today, uh, and that is the... Um, levy that you'll be asked to vote on next uh, Tuesday, March the 15th, concerning Hamilton's low-level dam. Uh, Hamilton High School principal Lou Florio is here today, and we have a group of students from Hamilton High School that are all part of the Hamilton High Presidential Committee that are with us today. We have, uh, for example, the uh, Student Council President, the Honor Society President, the Junior and Sophomore Class Presidents are with us. And uh, these students have been involved in discussions in their classrooms concerning uh, this dam. And we're going to ask them a little bit about that and get their personal opinions on uh, how they feel about the possible passage of this and some of the benefits that they think they might derive from passage. And uh, Mr. Florio will also have some uh, viewpoints on that for us also today. I do want to uh, remind all of you, uh, if you're watching us live today on uh, Tuesday, March the 8th, that tonight at 7 o'clock, uh, the Broadcasting Arts Department here at Hamilton High School will be presenting to you a special 90-minute television and radio program that will be dealing with issues concerning the low-level dam. This will be a live program that will air at 7 o'clock here on TV 11 and will also be simulcast on FM radio at 89.5. Now you folks that are watching me now, of course, all have a cable TV or you wouldn't be able to see me. But if you have uh, friends and or neighbors that do not have cable TV that would like to listen to this program, tell them that it will be on FM radio on WHSS uh, 89.5 FM. It will be simulcast. And uh, David Spurrier, who is the station manager for WHSS and I, will be moderating the program tonight. There will be approximately 22 guests here that are going to address the issues concerning this dam. And you, the viewers, will have the opportunity to phone in live any questions that you may have. And these experts and people throughout the community that will be with us tonight will answer your questions. We've had special phone lines installed here to take your phone calls. We do want to emphasize the fact, however, that the program is not a debate. It is a program designed to present facts. It is not a debate. If you are a person on the opposing side, uh, we welcome your phone calls and we'll be happy to answer your questions. But the program is not a debate. We anticipate a lot of phone calls and we want to give Everybody the opportunity to have their question answered uh, tonight. So we do invite you to phone, uh, to phone in. There is a graphic running uh, on the channel today that uh, promotes this program tonight. And the phone numbers are there if you would care to write them down in advance. But we will constantly make you aware tonight of those phone numbers. Tonight at 7 o'clock. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll meet Hamilton High School Principal Lou Florio and then uh, members of our Hamilton High Presidential Committee right after you watch this. Information. To be the best at anything, you've got to be physically fit. Train hard. You've got to be sharp mentally and keep yourself in top shape. You've got to learn all there is to know about your sport and be a team player. And most of all, you must have the burning desire to be the best. Incidentally, that's exactly what it takes to be a Marine. Sports and the Marine Corps are natural partners because the demands are the same. Teamwork, pride, discipline, and physical fitness. If you're interested in developing to your full athletic potential, the Marine Corps sports program offers an opportunity to go as far as your athletic talent and desire will take you even as far as the Olympic Games. If you seek the challenge of going out for the world's finest team, maybe you can be one of us, the few, the proud, the Marines.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're back. We have a, a nice show for you today, an informative program. I know there are a lot of questions out there concerning the low-level dam. Uh, there are two sides to this issue, and as we all know, as there are with all issues of a controversial nature. Uh, and we thought that today you might like to hear some of the opinions and viewpoints of students here at Hamilton High School, and that will be a part of our show today. First of all, though, to explain to us uh, a little more about what today's program is about and the involvement of Hamilton High School in this issue, uh, we have Hamilton High School's principal. Please uh, welcome the man who personally taught me how to drive a car, Lou Florio. Thank you, Michael. Mr. Florio. Uh, first, I want to know, Michael, have you had any wrecks? Uh, no, sir, I have not. Then and you may say that I taught you to drive on I, the air here. I think I've told you this uh, off camera before, but, uh, but I'll tell you uh, right now that uh, I still remember a lot of the things that you you taught me when you taught me how to drive a car and I use those things every day and it's amazing how you retain those things but how important they become as years go on. Wonderful. Well let's talk that's about true. one of my favorite subjects right now and that's the low-level dam. Now you are a supporter yes. of this. Oh 100 percent. Uh, and we all know that and I'd like for you to to explain to the people watching us today what uh, Hamilton High School's involvement is in this issue. Well, as you know, as this issue started out, Mike, uh, we have people who are for the dam, we have people who are against the low-level dam. Sure. And the city fathers and some of our uh, very influential people in our city, also some very uh, concerned citizens in our city, have asked people, school system, public officials, other people to get involved in aiding the passage of the low-level dam. Uh, I feel as a school system, we've gone to the public and asked the public many, many times to help the school system and in many, many ways and many phases. This is a way that we in turn can help our community if you feel strong that a low-level dam will definitely help Hamilton, help Hamilton's image, help bring industry into the city, help bring people into the city, beautify our city, um, then you have to say, yes, let's go for it. Let's really help these people pass this low-level dam levy. And this is uh, what we're doing here. Also, educationally, this is great, because what it does in an educational sense is that our young people who are going to be the leaders of our city, and uh, these people that you're going to have on the show are members of a group that I meet with once or twice a month. They're called the President's Club. They're presidents of their class or they're president of organizations. They're dynamic young people. You're going to find this oh, out on the show. And they have a concern about the city of Hamilton. They have a concern about the direction that the city of Hamilton is going. And they wanted to show the people in Hamilton that they are for a project of this nature and they feel that it, it's beneficial to our city and you're going to hear from them. And they've done a great job in promoting sure. the low-level dam levy, but also educational-wise to get into the political process, which they have done. And, I, and you, you'll see when you meet these young people that one of these days they may be in the political process of this city. And they are getting great first-hand experience of how you go out and get votes, how you communicate with people, and how you get your opinion across. And this is a great educational experience for them. And I, I just sit back and I'm enjoying this thing. I'm enjoying watching these young people really go after this thing. And the educational experience that they're having, to me, is uh, just cannot be measured. That I, I, I know that you personally enjoy seeing your students involved in issues of this type because it does prepare them for what's to come when, when, when they get out of school. This and, is, and you think that's important. Oh, this is so true. And I hope that these young people and, and, and a lot of other young people get involved in the political process of our city and get, in, get, get involved in issues and take a side, whether it's for or against, but take a side become involved, be able to express to the public, and be able to express to their peers their views. 
I, I don't think there's anything that is better educational-wise than that. And, and it, it, is it not true that if you know that something is good, you can accomplish that if you know the right way to do it, and that also is part of what they're being taught? Yes, this is true, because these young people first have researched the issue. That's, know the that, facts. That's the number one thing. You have to research the issue. Number two, you have to know the facts, as you've said. Three, you have to be able to present it. In other words, you cannot go and present these facts and be like Dudley Dahl. In other words, you've got to be able to go in there and you have to project and you have to be able to sell your peers and it's very difficult to sell your peers. Sure. In other words, it's, it's much easier for these young people to sell you and I than to sell their peers. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, they're doing a fantastic job out there. They're selling their peers and their peers in turn are selling their parents. And that's, but again, they're learning about the political process and that is so important. And that's the way you get the votes. You influence people correct, correct. to get the votes. Well, now, I've said enough here. Let's get these young people up here and you'll see what I'm talking okay, about. I'm you know, I'm very excited about these young people I know because you they are, as I said, they're the presidents and they come in with some of the doggone suggestions you ever want to see in your life. I mean, uh, and, and one of their suggestions, we've already taken to the board, one of them smiling over there, and our Board of Education passed a suggestion, and I think it's a very good one. And we'll talk about that, though, in some right. other show, because right now we're here to talk about the low-level dam, and uh, let's get to the young people, because I think that's the most exciting part of the show. We'll take a break right here, Mr. Florio, and we'll be back with you and the Presidential Committee and their thoughts, folks, right after you watch this. So stay right there. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back in only 30 seconds. people live with hunger every day and they're looking to the rest of us for help some need food others need a hand so they can make their own way in the world protestant catholic and jewish relief and development agencies are working with people in 125 countries please help them send your tax deductible contributions to interfaith hunger appeal post office box 1000 new york new york 10150 please give and how much uh, it's Okay, we're back, folks. Uh, good show for you today. A lot of things happening today, and we appreciate the remarks from uh, Mr. Florio. Now we're going to meet these fine people that he just made reference to, and I will introduce them to you one at a time, and I think they all deserve a nice hand when I introduce them, uh, considering the accomplishments that they have made thus far. First of all, we're going to introduce to you uh, the Student Council President, a nice hand for Carrie Weaver. Hello, Carrie. Hi, thanks. Nice to see you. Nice to see you, too. You look real pretty today. Oh, thank thanks you. For, thanks for your time. We appreciate it. Uh -huh. uh, next to you is uh, the gentleman who is the president of the sophomore class, a nice hand for Mike Lay. Hi, Mike. How are you? Hi. Good. Uh, next to you, Mike. We have the Honor Society president, and it's an honor to have her here today. Her name is Chrissy Grable. Hi, Chrissy. And down on the end of the couch, a gentleman who is the junior class president, Mr. Uzi Frank. Hi, Uzi. How you doing? Now, you guys on the end there, when you talk, hold your mics up good and high over, okay? Now, Mr. Florio made reference to uh, your involvement. Uh, here at the high school concerning this low-level dam. Uh, Carrie, let's start with you okay. and have you explain to us uh, kind of what your group of people uh, has been involved in. Okay. Um, we were asked by Mr. Florio uh, probably about a month ago if we would help out with um, getting the low-level dam passed and this involved going to the um, history classes and talking to them and trying to get their parents to vote, get them to go home and tell their parents that, um, that the dam's really good and that it should be um, voted a yes for. So. Do, do, do you think sometimes that, that parents maybe uh, don't vote the right way just because they don't, they don't have the facts or they don't have the facts right exactly. and they don't know which way to vote? Right. Uh, a lot of people are uneducated about the dam and they're not really sure what's it, what it is going to involve or um, how it's going to be funded or anything else like that. So. Being uneducated, they're definitely going to vote no. Right, and, and as Mr. Florio said too, there are a lot of facts and uh, information out there that's floating around about the dam 
some is true some is not true and if you don't do the research mm -hmm. like he said you folks have done you have to research and get those facts for yourself before you can decide what to do right exactly and that's what you folks have done mm -hmm. uh, mrs. Parrish gave us all um, fact sheets to uh, study with so we could go to the classes and talk about it right. about how much it would get a, what it was going to cost and uh, where it would be located at and just different questions that people might throw at us so we would be ready for any questions good well you stay right there we appreciate your information mm -hmm. uh, Mike how are you I'm fine good it's nice to see you today now you would you like to add to what the what Carrie has told us about what you folks are involved in yeah the, um, the education thing I was looking in the newspaper with Neil Neil Cohen wrote I see a lot of editorial in the journal news and I was reading it and the biggest problem I see is people not being educated they said that the river would become stagnant, which it's no possible way because it's pumped from underground. The river always flows. Right. And they were going on with these things about taxes and stuff, and people were just uneducated. And I think if they're going to take the time out to oppose something like this, that they should take the time out to also research their, their information because I know at, at least four of those editorials in the newspaper were completely wrong, and, they, and right. it made them look bad. But, of course, those people think they're right based upon the information that they have. Right. Mm -hmm. But had they, again, researched and got the real facts, maybe they wouldn't have felt that way. And they won't listen. I mean, I was talking to a young lady last night, and she said, what's going on about these ideas? And I said, no. I said, you're wrong. Here's how it is. No, I insist that I'm right. And I said, well, that's fine. If you, if you oppose it that bad, then, you know, you really must have a good reason. But her reasons were wrong. I mean, she kept giving me information that this wasn't right. There, there, there are concerns such as the... Funding that would be used to build the dam should be used somewhere else when in fact it can't be, that the river is not going to be deep enough, that it will become stagnant, that you can't do maintenance on the dam once it's built, and all, all of those kinds of things. And there are answers to each of those concerns. Uh, and again, tonight on our, our program here at 7 o'clock, all of the experts that have that information will be here to answer whatever questions that you have and you can research through the program t tonight and uh, resolve those issues that you and concerns that you have and uh, I'm sure that that's again that's what you folks have done you probably didn't know that much about it until you began to work right uh, toward this goal right right mm -hmm. but I knew it was a good idea I mean look at uh, we've got the underpass and people oppose that like Mr. Foyer said who would want to wait on a train I mean it's the same people who that, are opposing the dam we have a Hamiltonian we've got an exclamation point after Hamilton, why not add a dam, you know? Sure. Uh, all of those things uh, are things that some people opposed, but they have all turned out to be terrific things. Uh, and that's the way it goes, you know, you, you make improvements where, where you can. Mike, you stay there, okay, we're going to come back to you. Let's go down to Chrissy. Chrissy, you're the Honor Society president. That must be quite an honor personally for you. Yeah. Hold your mic up there, okay? Yeah, it is. Uh, <coughs> Uh, would you like to add to what Carrie and Mike have said so, so far? Um, well, the one thing people of Hamilton aren't looking at is the positive aspects of the beautification. Um, all the activities that could be added, we've got, um, you know, you could add sailboating, jogging paths, biking paths, um, the wildlife that would increase, it's just incredible, and these people aren't looking at the positive aspects of it. Right. Now, now part of the program uh, tonight that we'll do will be a slide presentation that Neil Burrell will make that shows our uh, area here the way it is and it's also also going to show what towns such as ours have done with their riverfront after they have built their dam and like like you just said some of the plans here are to have gathering places for a community events of the bicycle path uh, and, and all of those things, we will make use of uh, that land uh, where we don't now. And so you, you have talked about some of the kinds of things in class that can be done if this dam is built? Yeah, um, you know, the wildlife will naturally increase, so the fishing um, would be better. They can add, um, you know, you can have sailing. You obviously wouldn't be able to have motorboats, that wouldn't be safe. but. You have your bike paths, um, community area for, you know, like you could have fireworks down there or any kind of concerts. And people wouldn't, just wouldn't that be neat? We could have our own river fest here, couldn't we? <laughs> That'd be neat. That's good. So uh, have you learned some things now that you didn't know before? Oh, yeah, a lot. Such, such as? What, what kinds of things have you learned? Aside from 
just facts about the dam. What have you learned? We've just learned how great our city can be if people will just let it be. They're so set on the negative side and, you know, let's not let Hamilton grow. Uh -huh. But why not? Why We're never going to get anywhere the way we are now. Why not? Exactly right. Uzi, how you doing? Good, thank you. Nice to have you today, Uzi. You're junior class president. Yes. And I, I'll address the same uh, question to you. We've heard some really nice remarks from your three friends here. Do you have something you might like to add concerning things you've done or learned? Uh, I agree completely with Chrissy. Um, I have to admit that initially I wasn't for the dam. And why, why not at, at first? I just had a negative um, feeling about it. I thought that it would fall apart and everything, but I found out the facts now, and I'm very much for it now, and I think it really is a chance for Hamilton to become an important city, because right now there's very little for anybody to do, and it's a chance for us to grow, and I think it's important that we pass it. W w wouldn't it be nice to put a, a rowboat or a small boat of some type in up, up at the t Two Mile Creek Dam and pack a nice lunch and take a little Definitely. trip uh, down, maybe make a few stops along the way, have lunch, fish. Yes. Th those are things you really you could do now, but it it wouldn't be it wouldn't be Very that pleasant. neat right now. Mm -hmm. But that would be nice. Yeah, I think right now Hamilton, um, it's not the most exciting city, and this is really a way for us to make some important improvements for the entire city. Have fun on the river, and we could certainly do that. Uh, it's nice of y'all to be here, and I, 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 I'm very impressed, as Mr. Florio said, that I would be with what you have accomplished and the things you've done. We're going to take a break, but we'll be back. You stay right here. We'll be back, folks, in 30 seconds. Please stay with us. Just look at you, pregnant at 14. Just when I finally thought I had it together. Now this. Yeah, I know I had you and your sister without being married. But I worked hard to raise you and make a decent life. What about school? What about your little sister? And I'm responsible for you and your baby till you're 18. What are we gonna do? When your family needs help, Family Service America and your local family service agency. Okay. Well, we're back. We just have a few minutes left, uh, and I, I want to go down the line here again because uh, uh, part, I think, of what you have learned in your studies as you've researched uh, facts concerning this dam is that if you have a community goal that you want to accomplish, oftentimes there is a political process that you have to go through to achieve that goal. And Uzi, look, we'll, we'll go back there to you again. Uh, have you learned I anything about the process, some of the stumbling blocks that you're going to hit, and ways perhaps to get around them? Uh, yes. I think I have. Um, I was very nervous to like, go into classrooms. And um, now you just, after you get the facts straight, and when you know what you want to say to the people, it's very easy to get your ideas across. And... Um, it's an important part of, if you want to get something done, then you have to learn to get your ideas across to people in the right way. You have to have a presentation, and you know have to know how to deliver that exactly in an assertive, dynamic kind of way, right? Mm -hmm. If you don't, they're not going to listen to what you're saying. Precisely. Is that right? They yep. have to, you have to make people believe in you, and then they'll be receptive to what you have to say. Chrissy, you have anything to add to that? Um, I think the one thing that has helped with this is the fact that they've gotten us, the students involved, because people see that if we're worried about our future and the future of Hamilton, you know, then they'll realize that maybe they are making the wrong decision or the right if they're going to vote for the dam. Yeah, yeah. very good. Now, now, Mike, did, did you personally perhaps find that you came across someone that said no, but yeah. then you were able to t turn that no into a yes by the way you dealt with that person? Yeah, it uh, takes a minute, and there's, the, the people really get angry with you. I mean, I don't know. I take my time with it, and I show them my side of the story. And you have to agree with them. You say, "Yeah, I agree with you on that point," and then they'll say, "Okay." And then, but now you look at my point, and then you just talk to them lightly. And if they really get upset, you say, "Well, you know, that's fine if you really believe that." 
but I just wanted you to show you, to show you the positive points of, about this situation. And, you know, I think they think about it. And right then they may not admit to you, well, I guess I agree with you, but when they walk off, you know that you can tell always when you've got their kind of on did, your side. Did you find that the better your personal pers persuasive powers are, that the more success you may have with those kinds of folks that, sh that you talk to? Yeah, and energy levels and, and, you know, appearance and all that. That all has a lot it's to do with it. It's all important, right? Yeah. You can't... A, a person like you could not impress uh, someone perhaps that was not your peer if you made your proposal to them with a t-shirt and uh, your worst pair of jeans. Maybe Is I that could, but, I mean with the jeans, but as long as I've got the right attitude and the right information. The information is so important, I just, all these people that are opposing it, 99% of them have the wrong information. They've not taken the time to read the pamphlets that are at the library or watch the news or anything. Mm -hmm. They just have their mind set on the wrong information. You just can't persuade them. Carrie, we'll, we'll close out with you. Um, what did you learn about the political process? Um, I've learned that there are a lot of people in the city of Hamilton, in this, even the school, that are opposed to the dam just because they are edu uneducated. And you just have to take your time and you just have to go slow and you just, you don't want to force anything on them. You just have to say, you know, I understand that you don't agree with it, but maybe if you want to stop and just listen to what I have to say and just some facts that I have that maybe I might change your mind. Mm -hmm. Think about it in a little different way. Exactly. Maybe. Right. And eventually, hopefully, you can win them over, right? Mm hmm Thanks for your time today, Carrie and Mike and Chrissy and Uzi. It's a real pleasure to have you folks here. And special thanks to uh, Mr. Florio for his time from his busy schedule today. Immediately following this program, folks, at 7 o'clock will be our 90-minute television and radio special giving you all the facts about Hamilton's proposed low-level dam. Stay tuned and get ready to phone your questions in. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a good day. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye for now. You've been watching Hamilton High's Michael McGuire Show. Thanks to our special guest, Lou Florio. If your group or event needs promotion, call TV11 at 868-3782. show is directed by Ed Melcher, Associate Director Ed Melcher, Technical Director Doug Young, Audio Joey Davis, Videotape Operator Mike Tussie, Camera Operators Jeff Stitzel and Pam Alberson, Floor Manager Rick Virgil, Electronic Graphics Scott Heron, Lighting Director. Assistant Engineer Dan Trimble. Ideas and opinions expressed on this program are not necessarily those of Hampton City Schools or Miami Valley Cables or McGuire and Tams. This show is a production of McGuire Entertainment's the Broadcasting Arts Program at WHSS Radio. This has been Jeff Stitzel speaking. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.
Hilton has a major resource that's been neglected and ignored for years, our Miami River. By improving our riverway, we can beautify our downtown area, add to our recreational facilities, provide opportunity for commercial development, and perhaps most importantly, create jobs. It's a proven fact that businesses locate in areas where citizens are working together to improve the quality of life. We can enhance our future like so many other fine cities around the country that are enjoying the benefits of an improved and beautified riverfront area. Cities like Cincinnati, Columbus, Dayton, and San Antonio, to name a few. The first step to the riverway development is the construction of a low-level dam on the Miami River. You will be asked to vote on the future of Hamilton's low-level dam on Tuesday, March 15th. The program that you are about to see will answer your questions about that issue and better prepare you to be an informed voter. Now let's join the host for tonight's program, Mike McGuire. Hi everybody, good evening and welcome to this TV11 WHSS special public affairs presentation. I am Mike McGuire and I will be one of your hosts for tonight's program. Uh, also moderating tonight's program with me is Dave Spurrier. Dave, come on in. How are you? Good to see you. Big show tonight, huh? Very much so. An awful lot of uh, people were already starting to get some phone calls. Yeah, that's terrific. Now, uh, I'm going to be talking tonight with, uh, uh, with, with a panel of experts that we have here tonight. These are people who are experts on the issue of the dam. They know all about it. Now, David, you're going to be talking with some other people. And you might want to explain to us who you'll be talking to tonight. Sure, Mike. Uh, basically, the uh, folks that I'll be talking to are people from the community that are involved with community organizations, uh, unions, and uh, uh, historical organizations and that sort of thing that basically have an opinion, and we're going to find out what that opinion is. All right. Well, we're ready to get things underway. We want to remind all of you right now that we have two phone lines available for you tonight. We are going to try very hard to answer all of your questions concerning the low-level dam. Uh, we're going to put a graphic up on the screen right now. We're going to show you what those phone numbers are in case you don't already know. Okay. Uh, what you need to do, please write these numbers down. The numbers are 868-3770, 868-3770, and also 868-3771, 868-3771. Basically, those are the two numbers that you can call. We have operators standing by to answer uh, the uh, phone calls, and uh, we will attempt to get you on the air as quickly as possible. One thing uh, that uh, you do need to remember is the fact that, once again, this is a discussion of the facts. It's really not a debate. So uh, please keep that in mind that we will uh, answer your questions. We want to uh, get as many questions on as possible. Uh, whichever side of the issue you happen to be on, uh, we want to uh, air those questions. But um, the one thing that we can't get into is is really an extensive debate because as uh, as we've said we haven't even, we've barely gotten on the air and we already have some phone calls so 868-3770 and 868-3771 right now mike is standing by and he has uh, a couple of uh, folks uh, from the city of hamilton uh, that uh, basically can give you some information on uh, the low level dam mike Okay, David, before we begin uh, our program tonight and our discussion, I would like to give you a very brief history of the dam issue. Uh, at their December 9, 1987 meeting, Hamilton City Council formally approved legislation to issue bonds for the purpose of constructing a low-level dam on the Miami River within the city of Hamilton. The dam itself is to be approximately 10 feet high and will create a pool of water throughout the downtown area, which will average about four feet in depth. On January the 8th, 1988, a group of five Hamilton citizens filed petitions with city council to bring the low-level dam before the citizenry in a ballot vote. The election uh, on this issue is set for Tuesday, March the 15th, that's next Tuesday. On that day, registered voters in Hamilton will have the opportunity to decide with a simple yes or no vote the fate of Hamilton's low-level dam. The purpose of this special television program tonight is to provide a means and the resources to answer questions concerning this low-level dam. Questions such as, what will it create? How will it look? What are the costs? Why will it be good for the city? Will it affect wildlife or the environment? Now, hopefully we'll be able to answer all of those questions for you tonight. Our phone numbers are 868-3770 and 
771. Uh, and we might uh, ask also that you try to direct uh, questions that you may have to the people we're speaking to at that time. If you can't do that, we'll try to get them back on in a different uh, part of the program. First of all tonight, I would like to introduce uh, a gentleman who is the mayor of the city of Hamilton, Mr. Greg Jolivet. Hi, Mayor Jolivet. How are you Hi, doing? Mark. Good How to see you? you. Thanks for coming tonight. Oh, it's my pleasure. And uh, I want to thank you for uh, providing the forum for... Uh, for us to be able to get out the facts on the level it, of the It certainly is our pleasure. And with you tonight is a gentleman that I have not had the opportunity of working with before. He's the city manager of Hamilton, Mr. Jack Becker. Mike. Very nice to meet you. Good evening, you. sir. How are you? Nice to see you. Nice to see you, sir. All right. We're, we're going to try to get a little information from you right now, and I'm sure it's information that people uh, are wanting to know about. Let's, let, let's start with you, uh, Greg. Uh, we know that you have some very definite reasons for wanting to support the low-level dam, and uh, we're wondering if you could explain those reasons to us right now. Certainly, certainly, Mike. Uh, you know, today across the, the South is uh, Super Tuesday for presidential candidates, but I think that tonight is, uh, or next week, next Tuesday, is going to be Super Tuesday for the city of Hamilton. And uh, w with a successful vote of uh, low-level dam, my reasons for supporting the dam go back a number of years, and it uh, goes back from the defeat of 1975 uh, when the voters said three to one that no, they don't want their taxes raised. And that was the premise that I think city council took when uh, I, I know that I took in trying to um, put the dam before the voters are, are to construct the dam. Uh, because the number one reason for me is that we're going to be able to build this dam without raising taxes. And I think that's very important. And number two, we're going to build this dam with city funds, which aren't going to jeopardize any other projects. And number three, because of the low-level dam, it's going to create uh, the era of development through the riverfront area and the downtown, which I believe is very important for the future of our downtown area. We've been very successful in, in Hamilton in the last year with annexations, which have have over 700 acres of uh, new land have come into the city of Hamilton. And we're expanding outwardly, but we have to take care of our downtown, which is our, our bread and butter. And we have to attract people to downtown to, to enjoy the city and to spend money in the city. And I feel that the low-level dam will bring that, uh, those people, is the, the water is like a magnet for people. Mm -hmm. and to enjoy the river and all its amenities uh, would be a boon to the area businesses downtown. You know, today is just a, such a beautiful day. I, I'm hoping like in a year from today, maybe a year and a half, a day like today would, uh, you know, we'd be able to count just uh, hundreds of sailboats and canoes and people fishing, enjoying the river. Whereas today, you, you couldn't see, all you see is the ducks, and uh, which is great too. And, and a year and a half from now, we'll be able to see the sailboats and canoes and ducks. All right, we, we do have a call on hold. Before we take that call, Mr. Becker, let's come to you. I'd like for you to explain how uh, I understand that the investment that has to be made to uh, construct the dam is actually quite small compared to what this, the budget uh, here is. And also, could you explain a little bit the cost and the financing of the dam? All right. Uh, the dam itself will uh, cost uh, a minimum amount of money on an annual basis. Uh, we have issued uh, bonds in the uh, amount of uh, $1,728,000, which will uh, fund the local share of that cost. The bond issue is uh, a 20-year bond issue, with the annual interest being at uh, approximately 8%. So the average annual debt service payment will be about $156,000 a year. That compared to our annual budget of uh, 100 or 130 million dollars is a very very small fraction. Uh, so it is a project that uh, uh, we're getting help from the state. We're getting a million dollars that does not have to be repaid, mm -hmm. and I think that's a primary reason why the project becomes uh, feasible to the for the citizens of Hamilton. Okay. We, we did lose our caller uh, that we had. Perhaps uh, she will call back. Mike, I think it's, it's important to, to say that you know, the city services are utmost uh, in importance to city council. 
and we want to see that city services maintain an increase in, in efficiency. And we would not do anything that would jeopardize the basic city services. And I think it's important to let the citizens know that sure. through the budget, uh, we're going to be, uh, the capital improvements, we're going to be building a, a west side fire station. We're going to be putting $600,000 into our streets and resurfacing. Uh, we're going to uh, continue the gas lines, which is a, a very big, and it always comes up as a question that the low-level dam is uh, going to take away money from the repairing the gas lines. Those things are, are priority one with city council. The basic services that, we, that the city provides is what the city council is always uh, maintained and kept in their, in their foremost in discussion whenever we talked about the low-level dam and that it's not going to jeopardize other functions within the city. It uh, is affordable as Mr. Becker who who has been with the city for 30 years and is, who's been uh, uh, tremendous as a finance director and a city manager. Certainly. And uh, uh, if you can't trust this guy, uh, you can't trust anybody. And uh, um, uh, the city council has the utmost faith and confidence in Mr. Becker and all the city administration. And I believe that the, city, the people of Hamilton have confidence and faith in their city council, which they just elected. And I think that uh, with on next Tuesday, uh, with the voters' approval, you know, we'll go forward in the city of Hamilton. We'll see what happens. Mayor Jolivet, we appreciate uh, your time tonight, and uh, it's nice to see you. Well, Mike, and uh, this is uh, the fun part about being in uh, public service to see things progress. Mm -hmm. And if anybody, if you can't get through tonight and you still have a question or a concern, please call my office, and I'll be happy to return the phone call and, and make sure that you know the right information when you go to the polls on March 15th. And Mr. Becker, we appreciate your time, sir, and, and the information. Well, thank you very much, Mike. Any further information anybody wants, certainly can call my office as well. That's nice to know. Thanks for coming. We appreciate the time. All right, folks, our phone numbers are 868-3770 and 868-3771. We have a lot of phone calls coming in. We will take your call just as soon as we can. Right now, we're going to go to Dave Spurrier, and Dave uh, has with him a member of our fine community. Dave?